All right, well, we're on the road to Vratnica Tumulus in the northern part of the Bosnian pyramid complex, which was discovered by Semir Osmanagic in April of 2005. It is now January 2nd, 2015. 2015 has an odd ring in the mouth. 2015 should be 14, but it's not. It's, it's new, novel. 2015. To our left, we have a rather large cemetery. And to our right, we have, in fact, Vratnica Tumulus. Let's see if we can get a good shot of that. Ah, oh, there we go. So let's, uh, let's make our way up to the excavation points of the Tumulus and see what's there. As we can see, there have been no people or cars up here. The car, the last car to be here was was here, was right there. So there's a little road there, there's a smaller tumulus there. And we're just going to go right up here to the side of the tumulus <clears throat> where there's an excavation point. Now there is a terrace of stones here, really beautiful stones, which I had hoped would be partially visible, but it's not, it's covered by snow. And then there are some megalithic stones here, which are actually quite photogenic in this moment. Why don't we get a little closer just to have a look. These are artificial stones. I've got a video called uh, Three Layered Stones, I think it's called. The Mystery of the Three Layered Stones on Vimeo. And we talked about how many layers there actually are. It's hard to tell. <clears throat> and it's a very interesting conundrum. How and why the ancients made these huge stones and then placed them in the tumulus. And of course they did the same thing at Pyramide Miesetsa the Bosnian Pyramid of the Moon. And then they used concrete instead of stones. Instead of artificial stones, they even used artificial concrete on the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. So it's all a big mystery. It's, uh, it's hard to know uh, even the most basic things about this pyramid complex. And uh, we're triangulating the mystery as we go. All the good scientists and documentarians and uh, thinkers all around the world. So let's go up to the excavation site and see what's happening. We have animal tracks here. Let's follow this animal track. Let's see where this goes. Not too many animals here. This snow's been here for at least two days, possibly longer. So we've only got one or two animals. Here's a little <coughs> uh, stair stairway that was built in the clay because the ancients used clay in, in combination with concrete and stone to build these pyramids. Clay is a great material for building large structures because it is waterproof, it is soundproof, sound, yeah, soundproof. It's an earthquake mitigator 
because it's elastic. And so they used it with stone and they didn't have to use, they didn't have to create artificial stones as they did. This is artificial. They created this stone. This is a megalith that was created. This is created. This is created. Uh, but they did create their own stones. That's a lot of work. So that's just one more question that we have. Why did the ancients spend so much time creating these layered stones that look as if they're made out of clay and possibly fine sand? Let's just get a close-up of that so we can see what we're talking about. Maybe get a photo too. And just, just to see, get a closer look. Now, of course, the, what the ancients did on the Tamilai and the pyramids, uh, the pyramid of the moon specifically, is to layer clay between the stones. So we'll have a terrace of stones. We call it a terrace. It's just a structural, the stones are a structural element. They're not really meant for walking on because they're inclined into the structure so they're not really comfortable to walk on, but uh, then the then they'll layer a meter or two or three of clay. This is all clay here. So they just laid that down there, inch by inch, whatever it was. And uh, they got themselves a structure, a monumental structure here at Vratnitsa Tumulus. And wh why did they create this tumulus? Well, <clears throat> come out to Visoko, Bosnia and help us figure it out. We're just going to keep walking with the animals here. Looks like a rabbit because he's <laughs> jumping along. Yeah. Jumping along. I'm stopping every moment, every few moments to take photos because uh, the video and the photo can go at the same time. Yay, technology. So here's a totally pristine area. And I kind of don't want to put my footprints on it before I get some photos. So, let's take some photo and video of this gorgeous terrace that was uncovered by Dr. Semir Osmanagic. A megalithic terrace here at Vratnitsa Tamilas in the Bosnian Valley of the Pyramids, the northern point. He calls Vratnitsa the gateway to the pyramids from the north. And uh, get a nice photo of this in snow. I was hoping that they would be partially covered by snow, and they are. The uh, terrace down below is fully covered by snow, so we couldn't get the snow and the stones, the beautiful textured stones, in the same photo, but that's okay. It is always as it is meant to be. Now, you see the layering <coughs> above the megalithic stones. So you have this incredible megalithic terrace, and we'll see more of it as we go 20 or 30 more feet down there. But until then, you'll see, you see this layering of the clay. It's just it's artificial clay. It's clean. It wasn't laid down uh, by nature. Otherwise, there would be other things in it, rocks, <coughs> sticks, organic material. The only organic material in this clay is coming down from the trees that are modern, that are sticking their roots down. Now you can see the soil that's accumulated over the, over the clay. The soil is accumulated naturally. That's about half a meter, depending on where it is in this line here, or less than half a meter. I'm sure it's a lot more near the bottom of the tumulus as the rain washes it down. But So the, the roots go into that soil, and they're fine, 
but they have a hard time getting any much further down beyond the soil into the clay. It's not as easy to get through. But there are some, some roots that have gotten a few feet into the clay. So uh, this artificial clay is, is obviously incredibly useful in building pyramids. There's another mini terrace, as you can see, of stones, artificial stones, right there, and it goes along. And as they excavated, that one stone there came out, uh, was uh, left to its own devices there, and it'll probably fall sometime. And they've got another little small terrace or layer of stones. All these are slightly inclined into the structure itself for structural strength. And then above and below, you've got the clay. And then above the clay, you've got the soil. So we're just getting a few photos here, documenting. Not many people out documenting pyramids in the winter. As you can see by this pristine snow. But let's be the first in this snow to come to meet the megaliths. These are very, very, very b large stones. Batnitsa has the most impressive megalithic array. And these are huge, absolutely huge, as you can see. This stone here is, let's see, that's about nine feet, slightly less than three meters. And uh, this one also is about nine feet long all the way to its point there. Let's see if we can get a <coughs> vertical shot, which will be a little vertiginous for the video viewers. We'll have a nice photo. Bear with me. And uh, All right, now we're back. So let's go along that, that upper terrace. We see that it's inclined into the structure slightly for structural strength. And it just keeps going along, going along, going along. And then we have another layer, although it doesn't seem to as similarly stretch over this way, just sort of, sort of disappears into the clay. But there's a smaller layer here, which is mimicked down there. Let's see, where is it? It's hard to see with this monitor exactly what I'm looking at here. Uh, ah, it's mimicked down there. And so, several layers of stones here, with this being the most significant, let's say. Uh, here's a fallen one. This was not fallen. Before, we have video of Dr. Semir Osmanagic standing in front of this absolutely huge stone. Let's see if we can see, see it better. Uh, um, and talking, giving a, a nice lecture to media and tourists. And this stone is, is vertical. Uh, sorry, this stone is horizontal on, on its... Uh, 
cousin stones to the left and right. Then uh, I guess what happened was they had, uh, to support it before it fell, they had put this, some uh, wooden supports, some beam um, posts. But that didn't do much when, uh, when the stone said I have to fall, the stone fell. Uh, the wooden supports were not uh, relevant in that case and then at that time. So, uh, that's one way of saying the foundation could use some money to help shore up these stones here and also on the Pyramid of the Moon. Because excavation does take its toll and then it would be nice to be able to keep the terraces from eroding and then falling. Um, and that would be an easy job to do. Easy in the sense of the technical sense of it. Not so easy ro bringing stones up to make a uh, retaining wall for the terraces, but uh, we could do it. Um, there's lots to do here in the pyramid complex, far more than one man can handle, and far more than a hundred or two hundred or five hundred volunteers a summer can handle. Although, of course, uh, they do get a lot of work done, the volunteers, international volunteers, all from all over the world. I guess I just said that because the international means from all over the world. Uh, yeah, international volunteers from so many different locations all over the world. Germany, Australia, United States, Sweden. All right, so we have evidence, even in the snow, of the channels between the stones. Now, this megalithic terrace is, as you can see, inclined into the structure. Uh, I'm going to bring a measuring gauge made out of wood and uh, a level, a long level, to show the inclination uh, of the terraces around the pyramid complex. Uh, because me talking about it is not the same thing as a level showing it. So, but basically, for now, I'm going to put my camera approximately flat. That's about flat. And you can see that the stones are inclined to the right. They are not level. They have a, a similar inclination as they go along. And they also come up toward us. It's not as easy to see on video, but it's easy to see standing here. So just as with the Pyramid of the Moon, we have the inclination into the structure at the same time as the whole terrace is moving up the pyramid in one direction or another. Uh, and Semir Osmanagi's discoverer of the Bosnian pyramid says that this is a, a spiraling movement of these. They spiral around the pyramids. And we have to do more excavation to confirm that. So, uh, let's revel in that incredible absolutely incredible technology manifest here before our eyes. We believe that the pyramids and the tumulus here at Vatnitsa and the Ginye tumulus to the south, marking the south southernmost point of the complex, were built 30 plus thousand years ago. Uh, carbon dating of material from the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun it gives us a date of 29,200 years plus or minus 400 I believe is the date and then with carbon dating you have to add 15 percent for the calendar year so that's looking like 34,000 years ago now uh, if all of these structures were built at a similar time, then this tumulus, these stones, 
This very terrace was built by people or intelligent beings, let's say, 34,000-ish, plus or minus a few hundred years, years ago. That's the best information we have right now. Uh, the Romans were not involved, let's just say that. <laughs> The Romans came much later, the Greeks came much later, the Egyptians, what we know as the ancient Egyptians, were not ancient, by the way. I mean, even if you just look at it in a common sense way and don't think about ancient history, truly ancient history, if you, if you know nothing about the people that must have lived here on planet Earth before recorded history, if you know nothing about that, you still have to admit that the ancient Greeks, the ancient Romans, what we call the ancient Greeks and ancient Romans, um, the ancient Egyptians uh, were actually here only uh, 200 generations ago. That's 200 generations. That's not ancient. <laughs> that's, uh, that's 200 mothers giving birth every 20 years. So uh, let's, not, let's not call those ancient. Let's call this ancient. Let's call 34,000 years ago, not 4,000 years ago, ancient. And then before that civilization, there was another civilization that was advanced and even more ancient. And before that, there was another civilization that was even, even more ancient than that. Let's call those civilizations ancient. Alright, as the modern day uh, saw, saws wood in the background, um, let's look at the clay and stone alternation. So we have clay, right here, layers and layers and layers and layers of artificially laid down clay. Then we have the stone terrace inclined slightly into the structure so that it has structural strength. Then we have the clay layers. Then we have another stone terrace inclined into the structure. Then we have over here because of our excavation, some of these stones have fallen. They're no longer inclined. But we see this incredible amount of clay that was used. Incredible amount of clay. Let's just, let me get a photo of that. It's just so remarkable. Um, all that clay and then stone. And that's, a, that's an artificial stone. It's made out of something like clay and sand, fine sand, but we have to get those analyzed but it's very much like what one would call a clay stone. <laughs> Non-natural. And uh, let's, there's a little stairway here. It's somewhat treacherous though. And uh, it, it, you know, when it's got mud on it and snow and mud, I don't know. Maybe that's easier. <clears throat> Maybe that's easier. A oh, lovely sky today. So you can see even more clearly the inclination of the terrace here. My camera's about flat. Let's go down a little so we can see it even better. And the terrace is moving up toward us as well. It's uh, significantly, significantly inclined toward us and it's inclined to the right into the structure as all of these stones are. So let's see if we can make our way up this delightful stairway, which is made for intrepid spirits bent on discovering the truth about humanity's history, unlike present-day academia, which is bent on securing worthless PhDs. Sorry to have to say that. But, you know, it seems like academia would be the place to find the best and newest information if academia were worth its salt. But... In fact, it, academia always seems to become a place of entrenchment for the status quo. 
the old ideas. And new ideas have a hard time in the university. A very hard time. Due, I suppose, mostly to the egos of the professors. And the laziness. They don't want to change their curriculum. They don't want to have to think. They just want to have their lectures and have their sexual liaisons with their graduate students and the gravy train of tenure. That's so good for them. If they had to think, they might actually have to take time off from having sex with their, with their students. And they wouldn't want to do that. So, uh, yes, I do know <laughs> professors in academia. And yes, as we all know, it is not as we wish it were. It is full of egotistical idiots. The university realm. And it's very sad. It makes me very, very sad. Because I went to college. When I went to college, I was so idealistic, you know. I thought, oh, people at college would be honorable and care about knowledge. And that's that's what I thought. And then what I found was that people were at college to drink and have sex. And uh, that was odd. And then I found out that the professors were on the make, and that was understandable. But uh, I just wanted it to be about the, the knowledge, you know? Uh, let's see, here we are on top of the tumulus. We have an incredible view of, let's say, the Bosnian Valley of the Pyramids. Because the sun is up over there, we know that, that is, and it's about two o'clock here, a little after two. We know that south must be just about over there because that's where the sun was around noon. And the sun is south of us in this hemisphere. Which means, that if that's south, then that is east over there. And, the, and that is north over there. And we are on the northernmost part of the Bosnian Valley of the Pyramids, which means that most of the other structures are straight that away. <clears throat> All of the other structures that have been discovered are straight that away to the south. And let's see. Most of uh, the timeless is covered in snow, as you can see. Absolutely lovely. Absolutely lovely. So we can't really see much up here. There's no obvious excavation up here. This had been excavated, but this didn't really have much of interest as far as showing us anything anyway. Uh, so, what else can we do up on the top of a tumulus? Well, some people meditate when they come up here. Some people chant and meditate and feel the energy. I don't really feel the energy. Uh, the only thing that happened to me once was that my battery seemed to have been sucked of its energy, of its remaining energy, very quickly. But that hasn't happened since. It has not happened to this battery and it hasn't happened since. So I, don't, I think that might have been a fluke that had nothing to do with Retina. It's a time loss. So let's go back down, take a quick photo of this view, gorgeous, and go down these stairs. Might be nice to have a photo of those stairs before we die on them. Let's see if we can live. It's, it's not quite as easy to go downstairs as you know from being a child and an adolescent and an adult, i.e. from having experience in the world. But it is possible and the snow does provide, besides being slippery, is actually something that can provide traction. So it's, it's a double-edged snowflake here on this delightful stairway uh, on Bratnica Tumulus. I was I brought my uh, 
tripod so that I could get some nice video of this terrace, but it's it's so covered in snow. I thought it would be a little more melted off so we could just see some snow and some stones together, but it's more it's more uh, snow than stones. I suppose I could get some video of that, uh, just of the a little moving video of the terrace, but I think the photos will do for today. Really lovely light and a really lovely day, and it's been wonderful to spend time with all of you who have hung in there as I ramble on about academia, the problems with academia, and the incredible beauty and stalwartness of the ancient sites. They just sit here waiting in silence until we can get our heads around them, you know? <laughs> and I guess generations of professors have to pass away, literally die, <laughs> before these new ideas can come to light, you know, can really be embraced. It's sad. I really believe that academia, that the university should be the place where new ideas are are bantered around immediately that the that this is that that's the forefront of knowledge instead of the the hind end shall we say it really really depresses me to talk to professors i i i emailed <coughs> let's see for my book paradigm shift i emailed still in progress i emailed 1300 professors in universities all around the world oxford Princeton, uh, not just prestigious universities, but universities that, for instance, Robert Schock yeah, uh, went to, or, not, well, he went to Yale, so that is prestigious, but he uh, teaches at Boston University, which is, it's okay. He teaches in a non-degree granting unit, uh, so you, you go there and you, you study under Robert Schock and you can't get a degree from what you learn from him, which makes sense because he's the one He's the, the single most outspoken opponent of the project here, a libeler and slanderer of Dr. Samir Osmanagic. And uh, on, on Shock's official website, um, he says that there are no pyramids in Bosnia. He doesn't say further research is needed. So he's not even speaking like a scientist. He's just saying there are no pyramids in Bosnia. Based on what? He doesn't tell us based on anything. He just says there are no pyramids in Bosnia. So uh, this is simply one of many fully convinced professors all across the world who have never been here. Shock was here in 2006 when there wasn't much to see. Um, but the other professors that I've spoken to, I asked them five questions, one of which is, have you ever been to the site? You know, And they all say no. And I say, how, you know, how, how convinced are you that there are no pyramids here? And they say, we're 100% convinced. <laughs> and why? Because Robert Schock said so. And I believe him. Really. Robert Schock has been debunked for three years. Um, every single point he has made, and there are a few of them. He just makes claims that don't have real evidence. So it's hard to even argue with someone like that. They, 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 he just says things. He says things like, I have it on good authority that the hieroglyphics in Ravne Tunnel. He doesn't even say Ravne, he says the hieroglyphics in the tunnels uh, were scratched there by, by children or graffiti artists or whatever. And it's like, what's your authority? Who, who said that? How good, if it's such good authority, why don't you tell us who it is? And then show us a picture of what you're talking about. Tell us which tunnel. There's two tunnel systems here, KTK and Ravne. So he won't even like really say anything. He just makes sort of random, vague assertions that then people have to parse out if they want to even have an argument with him. So I have to make his argument for him. I have to say, well, if you're saying this, <laughs> I have to make his argument. And then show that any possible argument that could be made from what, from the sort of vague assertions he's making, uh, I have to show that all of those possible arguments are wrong, which I did, and that was three years ago. Um, so there is there there is no there is no basis for the academic claim that there are no pyramids in Bosnia. There is no basis whatsoever. There are pyramids in Bosnia. The question is 
when will the egos of the professors uh, make time for this tumulus, for instance? Full of not just artificially laid stones, but artificial stones. It's an interesting question. You might want to ask your professor that if you're a, a geology or an archaeology student. And now as the sun makes a, a play toward setting, it's not really setting yet, but it's thinking about it, and it's casting its golden light on these gorgeous megaliths, partially covered by Bosnian water in the form of snow. And by the way, there is a new Facebook page called Immeasurably Precious Bosnian Water, which talks about all the different... And you can even hear the stream. Hear that? You can hear the stream in between them. The ancient stream <laughs> making its way, the sound is making its way through the painful noise of that modern saw in the background. Uh, so, but the ancient water will survive the modern saw. Anyway, if you have photos or anything to say about Bosnian water, please come to that Facebook page and make yourself known, make yourself heard. Uh, let's get a little closer on this guy. The fallen stone is the largest stone of the complex. Here's a nice other large stone. Let's get a photo of that. But let me just... Hopefully I won't just disappear into this. Uh, I want to get a photo of that's close up of this actual material. It's an interesting... We presume, we meaning me, I presume, that these stones uh, were poured in situ, as they say in Latin. In situ, on site. They did not pour, make them somewhere else and then drag them here. <laughs> and yet, and no, there were no slaves with ropes and wooden ro wooden rollers dragging stones around back in the old days. The old days being far, far, far older than what they call ancient Egypt. Uh, they moved them with sonic levitation, and uh, that's what they did. Now. Um, uh, but they didn't need to do that. All they did needed to do here was pour them in situ. If they're gonna, if you're gonna make a stone, make it where you want to put it. You know. So that's probably what happened here. Um, certainly, the megaliths in Ravne Tunnel, which are far, far, far larger than these. Megalith K5 is as big as your living room, or larger. They were poured. They still have the marks of pouring there. They, uh, they have the... They look like mud. They look like somebody r ran through some mud and then that's what it is. But no, it's, it's a glistening, hardened, ceramic uh, megalith there in, in, in Ravne Tunnel. But here we are at Ratnitsa talking about Ravne. Let's talk, talk more about uh, Ratnitsa. If you go to Archaeological Park Foundation uh, on Vimeo.com, you'll find um, a video about the three-layered stones at Vratnica. And uh, as I said earlier, it's not really clear how many layers we could really say are composing any of these stones. Um, really depends on how you look at it, I guess. It's like how many layers of clay are there right there? <clears throat> how many layers did they lay down? Well, uh, you could say one, from one terrace to another. Or you could say, maybe there's 20 or 50 or 100 or, it's, it, it's, it's impossible to really know. Um, with the stones, it might be more possible to know, but one layer blends into another, it's, it's uh, kind of a judgment call. 
but it's an exciting field of endeavor trying to figure out who built the stones and then presumably the, whoever built the stones built the tumuli and the, and the pyramids. But uh, who built the stones? Let's start a new discipline that talks, let's, we're gonna go back to Visoko now. We got some really wonderful photos and, uh, and I'm really happy with, uh, with the photos, with the video that we have here. And if you stayed with me, then you are stalwart. You are, a stal you are as stalwart as the ancients and their monuments that hang on century after century, millennium after millennium. <coughs> um, and uh, let's start a new discipline that talks about how ancient stones were created. There's evidence that the Egyptian um, blocks, the ones in the bigger pyramids, the, the truly ancient ones, not the smaller pyramids that were built in more recent times, what we call ancient Egypt. Uh, the, the pharaohs tried to mimic the, the pyramids that had been there for thousands and thousands of years before they even got there. And they, they built these small pyramids that, that immediately crumbled because the, the pharaohs had no idea what they were doing. <laughs> Meanwhile, the, the three larger pyramids still stand. Um, those stones have been shown to be, uh, the megalithic stones from truly ancient Egypt have been shown to be artificial. So we should, we, we should start a new discipline uh, that, that speaks solely about that. Um, and I don't know what you call it. <sighs> in Bosnian, the word for stone is kamin. So let's, let's call it kaminology. Jock out.